96. Then I went to school at Ntunden Primary School, grade 1 and 2. Then I went to Sababa Primary School, grade 3 to 7. From 1 to 4, I went to Italian Mission. From 5 and 6, I went to JZ Moyo High. Then soon after completing my LA, I went to join the Army through the Officer Cadet Cross. The military, honestly, it wasn't part of the plan. I used to think I'll be a journalist. But um, I just saw in Advit that they were taking female of Sakadet for the first time, so I thought that was going to be challenging. And then I, I joined the army. After completion, I was commissioned as second lieutenant, the first and second lieutenant to be commissioned female from Cadet course. And then it was difficult, because when I went there, I didn't have an idea what it was about. So when we started, it was difficult. I was like, well, I want to run away. But I was afraid to run away. I, I went on with it. But I'm so proud that I did, because it will teach you being a leader, being straightforward, principled, and strong in terms of whatever situation that you face. So I wouldn't trade it for anything else. When we finished training, I went to work as a normal officer in the army. So I, I thought I could develop myself in terms of my academic. I did French first, and then I went to China under government sponsorship to do a degree in Chinese as a foreign language for four years. And then after that, I did my BA degree in media relations. I also did my international relations with UZ and business studies with uh, MSU, and now I'm starting for my PhD. Because I have some honorable doctorates, but I value the academic one more, a doctorate in business leadership. Being an officer in the army, you have to be exposed to the world. You meet a lot of people, be it under United Nations. My first deployment was in Angola as a peacekeeper, and I was leading my platoon. So there people be speaking Portuguese. At one time we were in Congo, they were speaking French. So the challenges that we had in communication, I thought it would be better if we had officers who can speak the languages. In China, it was natural because we were looking East. So there were people who were supposed to speak one of the languages that are spoken in the East. That's why that's I got my inspiration. Study Chinese. The platoon, you know, in the army, you have a section if you're in the infantry, and then we have a platoon. A platoon has 33 men. So if you are the platoon commander, you'll be mostly a, a lieutenant or a second lieutenant. So you leave, you are, you'll be leading that platoon. So I happened to go on a peacekeeping mission because Zimbabwe was going there at that time. It was, it was two years after I graduated from the Zimbabwe Military Academy. <laughs> it's a long time ago. <laughs> That's 97. Yes, it's always hectic, but you kind of find a way of managing, knowing when is family time, when is family for national events, when is family, I still do my job in the arm, when is family for army job, and when is family for my personal business and studies. So you just have to balance your time, that's what I could say. It's not easy, but you just have to manage. And the first definition of management is getting things done through other people. Okay. So if you have a lot of people assisting you, recognizing what their strengths and assigning them accordingly, just directing them to be easier. The message is, if you believe in yourself, anything is possible. I'm from Flabuzi, you know, it's a very remote part of Matebele land, and I grew up there. But I managed to work and find myself. Not that I've done well, but at least compared to the person there, I have managed to achieve. So just believe in yourself, be principal, set your side, make sure that you break your time. Everything, every second that you work, every minute, it, have to, it has to go towards what you want to, to be in future. It doesn't happen by accident. You have to work for it. Um, I feel for people. I, I like helping people. I like, um, you know, contributing to the society because I believe that sometimes in this society people are so selfish. We think about yourself, ourselves. So um, I'm dreaming of a world whereby we have people, leaders, who think of the next person, not themselves only, and help wherever they can and not be selfish. That's, that's all I can say. Let's just assist each other. Let's be kind to each other. Let's wake up and smile and bring that smile to the world. Help those that don't have clothes, that don't have food. You know, a lot of times in our homes, we are letting our children throw away food but their people don't have food, their people don't have clothes. So we have to work towards that, at least to assist the world to be a better place.